Good morning. And welcome to worship at St. Giles. We're so glad that you're here. We have slipped into summer attendance mode, and so there are a few less people in person and a few more person uh, people uh, on the virtual worship stream. We would encourage you, whether you're taking vacation or just at the lake today, Watch worship on Wednesday, if you can, or Thursday. You don't have to just miss it entirely because there's good information and fellowship that's shared each week. If you are here today, we'd invite you to take the friendship register, the black book at the end of your pew, to sign it and pass it down. That'll give you an idea of who's sitting next to you, and it'll help us during the week. If you're joining us virtually, we'd be glad for you to send a note to the office or to leave a chat on the video there. A couple of announcements that um, we recognize that as folks enter into summer mode, we have switched a couple of things in Sunday school beginning today. All children will stay here in the sanctuary to have music. We won't have Sunday school lessons in the education building this summer. We'll just have music. That should allow parents to go to Sunday school classes. And for adults, there is one Sunday school class all summer long. It starts today. Adam will be leading it. The class will meet in the education building in the first room on the right. And everybody's welcome to a Bible study and a bit of an issues discussion and a frank um, reflection on who we are at St. Giles and where our mission is leading us. This is um, going to be focused on Matthew 25 which is a book, um, a book of the Bible and a chapter, but it's also a Presbyterian initiative for the larger denomination. So we hope that y'all come. You don't have to come every week. Come when you can in the Taylor Education Building, the first room on the right today. Another need that we have ongoing are members of committees, people who are willing to give a little more time than just one-off projects, and particularly the leadership of two committees. We would be glad for anyone who's passionate about stewardship or building and grounds, the church property, to come and talk to us in the office because those leaders have done a great job. They've given a lot to the church, and they shouldn't have to keep doing it. Now's the time to hand it off to somebody else. You know best your time and energy and interest. Please come and talk to us. You don't have to do everything by yourself. We'll give you a team to work with, but we need you all to step up and volunteer Any committee would be glad for your help, but these two particularly need some leadership, stewardship, and building and grounds. There are other announcements in your bulletin and in the e-news. I would encourage you to be attentive to those. But for now, let us take a deep breath in and breathe out. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. And as we breathe in, We breathe in the presence of the triune God and breathe out the breath of God in the world. So we breathe in, we breathe in the peace of the triune God and breathe out peace of God in the world. As we breathe in, we breathe in the love of God and breathe out the love of God in the world. As we breathe in and breathe out, we give thanks that God has called us together with one voice to worship God.
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with the glory of God. be seated as we continue worship with a time of confession. In the very beginning, there was nothing to speak of, and so there was nothing to say, and so people might understand God's original language as silence. We will practice dwelling in silence today, and you'll probably also practice distraction You'll probably practice hearing other things, but seek the fullness that is in the emptiness as we explore and encounter God in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. In silence, we come to hear your voice. Our minds race and fill the quiet with muchness, manyness, noise, and hurry. 
In the stillness, we speak your language. Our hearts beat with the grace of God. Help us to recognize all that is, is your creation. Every step of our journey was required to come here today. Teach us to boast of our weaknesses, to air our dirty little secrets in the sanitizing power of your light. Liberate our foolish, naive certainty so our proud hearts may break with compassion, our simple minds may embrace wisdom, and our clouded vision perceive with clarity. Sisters and brothers, the grace of God is infinite. The love of God is unconditional. The wisdom of God is invigorating. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Listen as God speaks. As God's children, forgiven, made whole, we receive God's forgiveness. And a token of that is the peace which passes understanding. So sisters and brothers, the peace of Christ be with you. As we turn to God's word, let us turn to God in prayer. Holy one, holy three, you have given us life and breath this day. You have given us noise and words and silence. We pray that above it all, in this time, that we would hear your voice clearly. We would hear your word clearly. And all other thoughts and words would pass away. Illumine the path before us, we pray. Amen. The first reading today is Romans chapter 5. The first five verses. Listen now for the word of God to the people of God. Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through him, and we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems. We take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This ends the first reading. Now let me invite any children who are here this morning to come forward for a moment. And as you do, you're welcome to bring an offering for the Thornwell Building Families Program. So, 
The passage that I just read from Romans is one that you probably have heard somewhere before, and it, um, it has a nickname. It's called the Fruit of the Spirit, right? And we talk about some of the things that um, God is doing in our lives. So tell me some fruits that you know. An orange. What's another fruit that you know? An apple. Yes. A watermelon. Oh, I should have brought that. Um, Orange and apple. A peach. Yes. I have two more fruits in here that I bet you won't guess. They're sort of prickly and hard to get to. A pineapple. This is a coconut. Now, if you if you wanted to if you wanted to eat an apple, what would you do? Just eat it. You don't really touch it. You don't really have to um, do anything, right? You can just eat the skin. If you just um, wipe it off, it's smooth and easy, and it feels good in your mouth. You want to touch it? Um, what about if you wanted to eat an orange. What would you, you would just eat the peel? No, most people don't. Some people do, but most people don't. What would you have to do if you wanted to eat this orange? You'd have to do this. (laughs) You'd have to get the peel off, and then you'd probably throw the peel off. So it takes a little bit of work to eat this orange, right? And you'd throw the peel in the trash can. Good job. What, what about this? This feels very different, right? It's a little prickly, a little spiky. Does anybody want to touch it? Nobody wants to. How, if you wanted to eat a pineapple, how would you, what would you have to do? You'd have to cut it with a little knife, like a knife you would use to put butter on toast? No, you'd have to get a pretty big knife, and then you'd have to whack it pretty hard to get into it, Right? And then you cut it up, and even the inside has some prickly parts in your mouth, so you have to be careful. It takes some work to eat a pine ball. What if you, what would you do if you wanted to eat this? And do you know, the coconut doesn't even, it doesn't look like this on the tree. Um, The coconut, to get to a coconut, you have to climb up a tree. Then you, you could shake it, maybe, if it's really ripe. That you might have to get a big knife called a machete and get it to fall down. And on top of this, there's another big shell, so to speak. And you'd have to get, use that big knife, a machete, to whack into that. And you get to this part, but do we eat this part? No. <laughs> well, you can drink it, but you have to get inside, right? So you have to use the knife and go farther and really hack into it. And then what do you see when you open up the coconuts? Anybody know? <laughs> what, anybody like a pinch? <laughs> do you want a little bit? You can take a little bit and eat some if you want. Just take a pinch. No, no takers? Anybody want a pinch? So this is what's on the inside. And there's, do you want any, Mag? No. And there's some, um, do you want to touch it? Okay, then nobody else eat any. Um, <laughs> don't eat any. <laughs> That's okay. You want to touch it? Um, <clears throat> so this is on the inside of the coconut, and there's water that you can drink, but it takes a lot of, oh, boy, you're making a face. It does not taste good to you. Um, uh-oh. <laughs> so uh, there are some really good fruits up here, but it takes a little, oh, dear, you're going to need some water. <laughs> um, it takes some work to get to the fruit. And um, the coconut takes the most work to get into the shell and get to that good stuff. And that's what, when God was saying that um, suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces hope, it takes a little bit of work to, do you want to take, do you want to go get some water? Yeah, we'll get, somebody will come and help you. You can get some water. That's too much, too much good stuff right there. Um, So that um, God is talking about how it actually takes some work for us to get to the good stuff that God gives us, right? So we think about the fruits of the Spirit, peace, joy, and patience, but it takes some work to get to it. Suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, all these things. So that's what we're going to be talking about in church today. And when you eat your fruit this week, you can think about the good gifts that God has given you. 
Okay, so let's put your, put your hands together, your own hands together, and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for giving us good fruit that feeds our bodies and feeds our souls. Help us to fill our bodies and our souls with that good fruit. Amen. Okay, you guys can have a great day today. While we do have only a limited selection, if you are hungry at any point in the service, please feel free to take anything from the table and have a little snack. Listen to wisdom, who she is, how she sets the tables, how she dwells amid where the people are, giving good food, choice wines, and the gifts that never fade. Listen as the Spirit speaks through this text from Proverbs. Does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is, that all, is to all that live. O simple ones, learn prudence. Acquire intelligence, you who lack it. Hear, for I speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right, for my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All of the words of my mouth are righteous, and there is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to the one who understands, and right to those who find knowledge." Take my instruction instead of silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. For I, wisdom, live with prudence, and I attain knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is the hatred of evil, pride and arrogance, and the way of evil and perverted speech, those I hate." I have good advice and sound wisdom. I have insight. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me, rulers rule and nobles, all who govern rightly. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than gold, even the finest gold, and my yield is better than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness, along the paths of justice, endowing with warmth those who love me and filling with their treasures. For the Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of all his acts long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped before the hills, I was brought forth. When God had not yet made the earth and the fields, or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew the circle on the face of the deep, when he made the firm in the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when God assigned the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress God's commands when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker. I was his daily delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. And now, my children, listen to me. Happy are those who keep my ways. 
hear instruction and be wise, and do not neglect it. Happy is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves. All who hate me love death. This is the word of the Lord. If you look in your bulletin, you will see that we have a small hymn. It is a hymn that was taught to me in seminary by a professor of mine, Dr. Johanna Boss. And she pulled our class together and she said, we are going to sing together today. So here's how you know you can do it. Elliot's not going to teach the hymn. Meg's not going to teach the hymn. Right? A and B team are out. You get C team. <laughs> and that's generous. So, if I can do it, you can do it. It's one of those motivational programs. Here's how it works. I'm going to sing for you the tune. Then I'm going to invite you to sing with me, and then we're going to sing it again. After that third time through, I'm going to wander over here, and we are going to be the lead, right? Yes, we are. I love the confidence I'm seeing. <laughs> You're just going to sing along with me, and then after we get through the first phrase, yes, I'm looking at my experts <laughs> for wisdom. After we get through that first phrase, does not wisdom call, you all will start singing with Meg. And then Elliot's group will sing, and we'll do this in a round. Now, when we get to the part that says justice and love, we're just going to stay with it and keep it going until everybody ends together. And if it doesn't make sense now, it all will, because you have a great team. <laughs> and it's going to be so beautiful. So listen with faith and understanding as we together sing the scriptures. Does not wisdom call Understanding, raise her voice, bidding us to work for justice, justice and love. Does not wisdom call, understanding, raise her voice, bidding us to work for justice, Justice and love does not wisdom call, understanding raise her voice, bidding us to work for justice, justice and love does not wisdom call. Understanding, does not raise her voice, understanding, not raise her voice, understanding, raise her voice, bidding us and work for justice, justice and love. Ah, oh, that's great. <laughs> Well done. Very well done. Now, you can take this song and walk with it. Let it sing and guide you with the words of wisdom and remind you of this passage from Proverbs anywhere and everywhere you go. In fact, when things get complicated and you think, oh boy, what am I going to do now? You can hear the refrain, does not wisdom call, sort of marching in the background of your mind, reminding you to embrace the depths of wisdom. Because the problem we often run into is we confuse two words, simple and easy. Simple things are not easy things. I know this because my life experience shows me that simple is not the same as easy. It is also important that today is Trinity Sunday, right? A day when the church gives one day to explaining the 
fullness and wildness of God. And I think we confuse two words there as well. We confuse the word mystery with the word paradox. See, a mystery is something like one of those Scream movies where you know there's a killer and that killer has a mask and everybody's trying to figure out who did it and who the bad guy is. And once they do that, thank goodness, everyone's going to be safe in the town. Or a mystery is like Sherlock Holmes. And if you're just so keen and you have the right deductive abilities, you can figure out who committed the crime and prevent them from doing that again. But a mystery is a bad word for the Trinity. Because as many theologians and Bible readers and good interpreters of Scripture who have looked at this, for centuries, for millennia, none of them have satisfactory resolution to what the Trinity is. You see, it's three persons, but it's, it's one. And you're like, well, which is it, buddy? Is it one or is it three? And they say, yes. And that is not the answer to a mystery. That is the answer to a paradox. Because a paradox is something that cannot be easily resolved. A, a paradox is like what we see in Proverbs 8. Where in Proverbs 8, 5, the call of wisdom is to make wise the simple. And if we believe that we are anything beyond simple, we have engaged in one of the first problems that we encounter in Scripture. This is a popping. Hold on. Maybe that'll help. We'll see. If it doesn't work, I'll switch. We, we come to one of the first problems you see in Scripture. What happens is, God makes this beautiful garden for people, right? And in that garden, there are all kinds of trees. And God says, I'm so glad you're here. So glad. You can do whatever you want. Eat whatever you want. Have the best, most perfect, wonderful time. I made this just for you. Side note. There is one tree that you just can't eat. That's my tree. It's the, knowledge of good and wisdom, or good. it's the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat from that tree, you'll die. So have a great time. Enjoy the garden, just not that tree. Okay? Now in my mind, here's what I think the garden must have been. The trees were coconuts. The trees were pineapple. The trees were durian. If you don't know what durian is, it's this really spiky fruit, and when you break it open, it smells like gasoline and rotten eggs and hot New York trash. <laughs> and then somehow tastes like really custardy and delightful, but you kind of have to get over that initial mm, to enjoy it. They're the difficult fruits. Maybe there was an orange tree, or maybe a pomegranate, which was like, all right, like, that's okay. Like, you can break it open. It's a little bit of work, but like, fine. Why I think the apple is a great image of what the fruit of temptation was is because you literally need to do nothing for the apple. I'm one of those weird people who will eat an apple whole, seeds, core, all of it. You can do that, and that's okay. You don't have to peel it. You don't have to prep it. You can just eat it. It's easy. And it's sweet. And it's delicious. And I think when we have an image of five fruits and vegetables, we're just going to do that. And it's all like easy fruit. Or nowadays, you can even get fruit snacks or like squeezies, which are like apples that have already been cooked and mushed. And you don't even have to chew. You can just like drink your fruit. That easy stuff doesn't get us where God is calling us to be. So for the next few weeks, we are going to be focusing on what it is to grow. How we grow as individuals, how we think about growth as a church, how we think about growth in the community, in the world. Because the struggle we keep encountering is people say things like, oh, it's easy, it's simple. If only you just do this. You want to lose weight? Just eat fewer calories. It's easy. Well, that person's never seen a cake. 
or had fresh cookies delivered to the office because that's not easy to be like, oh, right, less calories, no cake, no cookies. Right, like it's easy, but it, it doesn't know. You want to solve issues of gun control? Just make new laws. Don't worry about underlying violence. Don't worry about like the way we talk to each other. Don't worry about any of it. Or don't make new laws and just give more guns to people. Both of those are super easy solutions, right? How are they working out for us? Easy and simple are not where God calls us to be. Instead, the scriptures say, make wise the simple. We have two children at home. One is five, one is two and a half. So we're somewhere in between the stage of I know. So we're somewhere in between the stage of I know them. And I think that that is a simple approach to making wise the simple. If someone says to you, it's easy, just do this. Ask, well, why? All right. It's easy. You don't want your mic to pop? Get a new mic. <laughs> the relentless why. Our children will ask this question. I just want to go to the pool. Well, you got to put on sunscreen. Why? Well, because the sun has radiation. Well, why? Because hydrogen and hydrogen are colliding together and they're producing energy, which causes a l huge... But, but, but why? Well, because... I don't know that you're going to understand particle physics. Well, why? I, okay. So that simple idea of putting on sunscreen to go to the pool now has become a physics lecture or a chemistry lecture or some sort of weird in-between space between those two fields where you have to understand more to understand anything. And I think... Making wise, simple things requires us to have curiosity, to have understanding. When Paul in Romans says, the people who are God's servants are the ones who brag of their suffering and their struggle because they reveal God, Paul is also saying, beware of those perfect, easy-living people, the ones who are just devils in disguise, the people who you see like on social media who literally have never had a problem in their life and it's like, I just woke up like this. <laughs> and what you don't see are the filters, the makeup, the 20,000 selfies before that, the fight that they just had with their friend that they're masking with hiding and burying tears and pain all of it. Like, we're real people. And when God calls us to make wise the simple, it's It's not, but it sounds like it is. Oh, all right, there it is. I don't know. We're doing our best. It's not easy. It's <laughs> so that's the thing. Simple things like a microphone, not easy. Conceptually, it's so simple, but it's not easy. There was a person in England named John Bradford, and he would hang out by the gallows, and he was a good, faithful person. And everybody he saw to go be hanged, he would say, this, there, but for the grace of God, go I, John Bradford. He was later burned at the stake because there was a regime change, and it turned out that it had something to do with Protestants and Catholics and Queen Mary and a bunch of English stuff that I don't fully understand. But the people who saw him burn gathered, and they said, here is one of God's saints. They made him clothes to wear for that special day, 
and it is rumored that he endured those flames like the gift of the Spirit as he passed from this life to the next and continued to say in myth and in legend, there but for the grace of God go I. I think this passage from Romans and this passage from Proverbs call us to growth by asking us to also use these words. And when we see somebody and think, oh boy, how could that person be so horrible, sinful, bad at driving, not understand how to use a self-checkout lane, not as good of a parent as I am, not doing things the way they've always been done, whatever easy judgment we jump into, how different would that be if we use the growth phrase, there but for the grace of God go I. And we sought not to judge but to understand, to listen, to have compassion, and to wonder with curiosity, how is that person's life something that I can reach into and also help bring God's healing in? Today, your challenge and my challenge is not to confuse easy and simple, not to confuse mystery and paradox, not to just eat apples when there are coconuts and durian and pineapple and oranges and other fruits that just take a little bit more work. For the gifts of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, generosity, all of those things are simple words, but lifelong practices. So friends, let us continue to walk with grace and understanding, for there, but with the grace of God, go we.
Having heard the word of God read and proclaimed, let us together state what we believe using words from the book of Romans in the 8th chapter. I believe that the present suffering is nothing compared to the coming glory that is going to be revealed to us. The whole creation waits breathless with anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters. Creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice. It was the choice of the one who subjected it, but in the hope that the creation itself will be set free from slavery to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of God's children, we know that the whole creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains up until now. And it's not only the creation. We ourselves who have the Spirit as the first crop of the harvest also groan inside as we wait to be adopted and for our bodies to be set free. We were saved in hope. If we see what we hope for, that isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit comes to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit pleads our case with unexpected groans. The one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit thinks, because they plead for the saints consistent with God's will. We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to God's purpose. So what are we going to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Who will separate us from Christ's love? Will we be separated by trouble or distress or harassment, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, we are being put to death all day long for your sake. We are treated like sheep for slaughter. But in all these things, we win a sweeping victory through the one who loved us. I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord, not death or life, not angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or any other thing that is created. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to a special time of prayer with one another and for one another, Our best prayer of thanksgiving is for this community of St. Giles, that we can be friends and family together. And that includes not just those who sit in the sanctuary, but those who worship with us regularly at home. That includes those who play in our gym and on our fields and our preschool. Our preschool is part of our family. Um, The teachers and the children both. This morning, one of the teachers in the preschool reached out and said her mother had fallen and was on the way to the hospital, and she asked for our church's prayers. I think that speaks well to the relationship that we have there. So we pray for Miss Shirley's mother, who's in the hospital as we speak. And we pray for um, Pierre de Young's mother, who is recovering from surgery, and for Elliot Smith's father, who's also recovering from surgery. Each of you bring your own concerns, and I hope that you'll find times and ways to share them with us and one another. But for now, let us lift up our hearts together in prayer. Holy God, you are more than we can know or name, yet we call on you again and again, for you alone are our God. We cannot live apart from you and are grateful that you've called us into your triune life 
so that your steadfast love surrounds us on all of our days, wherever we are, on a high mountain or a shadowed valley, at a crossroads on our journey, outside welcoming arms or inside an inner circle, you call to us, delighting in who we are, lifting us up to our better selves. We come before you in thanksgiving for all the gifts that you have given that delight us, for the beauty of this season, the colors and the textures, the scents, for the ways the road bends and carries us, for the lives of those who bless us beyond their even knowing, for St. Giles, who nurtures us and challenges us, for opportunities to serve you together as a family and to serve others as a family. We thank you for shared goals accomplished and for the gift of life we have today. We come before you humbly and hopeful for those we know who are suffering today because of illness in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for those making difficult decisions, for those grieving loss, endings, and dream deferred. We pray for healing and strength in every broken place of our lives, longing for the hope that you alone can give, hope that does not disappoint us, but rolls away that stone of death and despair. We pray for those whose livelihood is precarious, for those who live at the edge of poverty, for those who live in temporary shelter with tenuous provisions. Both in the public square and in the privacy of our own conscience, help us find the will and the way toward a common good. We come before you earnestly and urgently for a tumultuous world, for the chaos loose in the natural world, droughts and earthquakes and storms, for those who are starving, thirsty, or left to remove destruction's debris. We pray for the turmoil and the tumult that we cause through war and violence, hatred and prejudice, by indifference and by calculation. Root out of our hearts the seeds that do not come from your fruit but stir in us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, that we may love and do as you love and are. Holy God, we have done so much to disrupt, disengage, and even destroy what you have created and called good. Still, you are relentless in placing grace and mercy and goodness into the soil. Help us to be delightful. Help us to delight in you by living and playing in ways that please you. Help us to delight in neighbors near and far by living and playing in ways that restore true communion. Make us delightful all our days until we greet with joy the kingdom coming. Find all of these prayers in the one prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The triune God does not need anything from you or from us. But God is honored by what we bring. Offerings of time and talent and treasure. St. Giles, on the other hand, does need what you offer time and talents and treasure, whether that's committee leadership or gardening on the grounds or helping with session or any of the mission projects we have. Be intentional, be thoughtful, put the hard work into your offering for God so that God might be glorified and you could have great joy in returning this sacrificial gift to God. Let us then return a portion of what God has already given us in our tithes and offerings.
O oh God, we return to you a portion of the blessings you give to us. Transform these gifts, transform our lives, that we may be your servants, the builders of your kingdom. In our thoughts, in words, and deeds, and gifts, may all glory and honor be yours this day and forever. Amen. What does the Lord require of us? To, to do, do justice, justice, to love, love kindness, kindness, and to and walk humbly with our God. God is good. All the time. And all the time. Your charge is to not confuse simple and easy. When Meg and I first met, I uh, walked around with a walking stick, a cane, for six months. Why? Because my grandmother had died of leukemia and I thought it would be helpful to run a marathon and overtrain for the marathon to the point that I broke my femur and could only run like an extra in one of those wild zombie movies, <laughs> like this. <laughs> it was terrible. And I had to wait six months for that bone to heal itself before I could do anything. Do not confuse your way with God's way. It's not worth the potential consequences. Instead, be simple and ask, where is God in this? When you're driving, ask, where is God with me? While you're eating, savor each bite and say, where is God in the goodness of each flavor? When you're suffering, ask, where is God in the pain and the sorrow. Find God and notice. Make wise the simple. Do this as you go out into the world, blessed by the triune God who loves you, creates you, redeems you, walks with you each and every step of the way. Now and forever, make wise the simple and be blessed. Amen. <laughs> 